Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar for Chatbots on Government Solutions. I'm going to give everybody another minute or so to log on and get started, to log on and get settled, and then we'll get started. So it looks like mostly everyone's just about logged on and ready to rock. We have some great content for you today and I wanna to dive right in, but before I introduce our speaker, I wanna review a little bit of housekeeping for you. If you look to the right-hand side of your screen, there should be a questions drop-down menu. Please feel free to either hit the hand raise or enter a question at any point. We have saved some time at the end for a little Q&A, but if we're unable to answer your questions during our allotted time, Michael will be sure to email you afterwards. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Michael Greenman, our Government Solutions Manager at Talon. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Gina. Um, my name is Michael Greenman. I'm the Government Solutions Manager here at Talon. Uh, and this afternoon, for the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so, we're going to give you an overview of uh, government chatbots, of work that we've done, uh, and some kind of best practices uh, that might be useful to you uh, in your line of work or uh, in your business. And um, we hope this is informative and useful to you, but please certainly um, feel free to ask any questions uh, that you may have, and we'll be hopefully be able to cover those at the end. So just a big uh, background about Talon. Uh, Talon has been around for about 30 years um, as a company. We specialize in custom technology solutions development. You can see there by the map, uh, we've done and delivered projects in about 38 states, uh, and we have offices in six of them. Uh, I'm down in the uh, the Tampa, Florida office down there at the bottom. We've got others on the call uh, today from other offices across the country. So over the course of time, we've actually delivered uh, more than 3,000 uh, different projects. I think, actually, I think it's up to 4,000 now uh, to over 700 clients. Uh, so we have a pretty long resume uh, and a long uh, list of clients to uh, to kind of speak from our, our capabilities. Uh, we're 100% U.S. owned and operated. We do not outsource any of our work. All of our folks are uh, stateside, and we have roughly about 150 employees. Uh, but that fluctuates based on uh, project needs and availability. And um, we're uh, happy to get this opportunity to uh, show you a little bit about what we do. A lot of what we do is based on Microsoft technology. Um, they're our partner and our technology platform. And we've got gold certifications, uh, including the ones listed there on the slide and others. Um, but um, more importantly, we are a CSP and MSP, which means for our customers, we can source Microsoft licenses uh, to these platforms. Uh, so we are a, a kind of a one-stop shop, and Microsoft has been a great partner for us in uh, delivering not only uh, great solutions, but also some of our best um, customer relationships. So about chatbots in general, I wanted to kind of step back and go high level here and, and talk about why use chatbots. Everybody, like myself, we've got a perception uh, and, and kind of a, an idea about what a chatbot is, um, but I want to talk about uh, a little bit about uh, what we think a chatbot is and what it could be, especially as it relates to government. Um, another common misconception uh, with uh, chatbots is, uh, is this live chat? Is this, you know, what exactly, who am I talking to here? So with uh, chatbots in general, I uh, think artificial uh, intelligence uh, and technology that is gaining information by automating those procedures and, and those interactions that you have on the web. So case in point, a uh, citizen comes to a government website, is looking for information, uh, sees a, a chatbot option there, asks a question, are they talking to somebody live or are they talking to a machine? With a chatbot, they're getting a little bit of both. It's human interaction that has provided a baseline uh, for the information that's presented, but it's constantly learning and adapting. Uh, and so the automation starts with a baseline of this is what we expect. Now, chatbot, take in that information of the questions that our citizens are asking and give me insights on that, uh, whether new questions or questions that might be related to questions that we might already know. And with those insights, we can capture very valuable data about uh, our citizens, about the community, uh, and anything else that we might capture in between 
basically for the bottom line to better curate our, our web presence uh, because uh, a lot of folks uh, finding information about you know their government and about their community online uh, and it's in government's best interest to provide that information out there but making sure it's relevant is always a, a key factor uh, and other than individual user stories or citizen stories how else are you going to capture that information and that's a lot of what a chatbot does uh, in our estimation uh, is capturing those uh, in questions, those those pieces of feedback, uh, and not only recording that, but trying to give uh, the best course of answer to uh, the citizen or the web visitor at that time. And the great thing uh, about a chatbot, unlike uh, a live chat or, or some other uh, types of tools, is it's always on. Uh, it's always got access to that knowledge base uh, that has been set up. So if somebody across the world uh, or somebody who's just a night owl, uh, they wanna get information, they can go to your web presentation, uh, ask the same question they could ask during business hours, except there is something at the other end uh, that's going to be able to help them. So you never have a customer uh, or a citizen leave your website uh, without a proper answer or at least direction on where to find it. So I want to provide a little uh, perspective here. Uh, and again, this is based on user stories and a lot of what's uh, out there in general uh, about chatbots is the citizen perspective. Um, in this case, uh, kind of a customer of sorts, but uh, somebody who has a vested interest in getting information. Uh, and ultimately in government who we're, we're trying to serve at the end of the day. Um, so some examples here are uh, from a citizen perspective. A citizen is on uh, the website. Uh, they want to find information as quickly as possible. That, uh, most of us have pretty busy lives. Uh, we want to get in, get out, get on with the rest of our lives. So we would want to use a chatbot or, or the way Talon would deliver the chatbot is to simplify those citizen interactions by minimizing the design. We want to make it very clean, very crisp, uh, and make sure that uh, it's easy to find, uh, can handle you know, the majority of the questions that come in and the ones that we can't handle. We use adaptive technology uh, to be able to um, uh, better link up answers with the types of questions that are coming in. Another common scenario that comes up, I'm not sure how to ask that question. If I'm talking to a robot, you all of a sudden start editing in your head. How am I going to speak uh, so that my question is understood? The great thing about chatbots um, and, and essentially natural language processing is that it gives you a confidence interval based on the words uh, that are used uh, in, in you know, uh, the citizen typing into the chatbot uh, to come up with a, a confidence score of, I think this is what you're trying to say, and here's the feedback. Um, but the great thing about using a chatbot, especially with uh, natural language processing and artificial intelligence behind the scenes, uh, is it will grab that question, add that to the knowledge base, and the next time something like that gets asked, the confidence level goes up that we're providing the correct answer. And as I'm gonna show you uh, in a little bit, there are ways to kind of handle that initially as well to have backup responses. If you know the chatbot's uh, intelligence is just starting out and it's not as crisp as it should be uh, once it's had some time to adapt, uh, you can set backup answers. You can set backup options for if this didn't answer your question, here, let's take you to the search uh, until things are up and running. So there's lots of uh, uh, fallback there. And lastly, I can't find what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna call or I'm gonna visit, I, I give up. Uh, and this is probably more often than not what happens. Uh, so again, chatbots are gonna help eliminate those, that unnecessary effort and time on both parts, but really the citizen. They, they're, they're there on the website to get information. Uh, and you know, as government practitioners, uh, you know, we focus on the, uh, uh, the web design uh, to make sure it's accessible, to make sure it's interactive, and, and as much information as possible on there. We really wanna cut down on the number of calls and interactions that we have to deal with on an in-person basis because it's not serving their needs right away and also it's creating more additional work plus staffing uh, for additional customer support. But uh, kind of really the end goal on this is uh, to understand the citizen's digital journey and response, make websites easier to use at the end of the day. That's what we're trying to do. Now the administrator perspective, also very important to take a look at when you're looking at chatbots, when you're designing these, um, it's, it's important to understand those personas uh, so that we can build that logic and build that strategy uh, into um, the overall picture. Uh, in a case in point, administrator might say, I want to present helpful content on my website. So let's find out what your web visitors want by asking them. Give them a forum to do so. Um, a lot of uh, citizens uh, feel the urge to send an email. It maybe goes to a generic ask or a help uh, or a support uh, email. Maybe they get a response, maybe they don't. Maybe you have a CRM in place, maybe you don't. 
Uh, but the great thing about a chatbot is that it's going to collect that information and instantly go into a database designed to capture all of those insights and provide better uh, feedback to the public. So in addition to serving the customers on the one end, what the administrator is getting uh, from the chatbot tool on their side is all of those questions, which I'll show you an example of uh, we had set up for our customer in Delaware uh, that they can get on a nightly basis or even more frequently all of those questions that come in how the um, machine or how the chatbots uh, responded to those questions and what level of confidence uh, was assigned to that response. So another uh, common perspective here, my website needs to be accessible to serve everyone. So design a user experience that works for everyone. Um, you know, you definitely want to simplify the design. User experience is a big part of chatbots because as we'll see, you can put a chatbot on a, a website, but if the website makes it difficult to to find the chatbot or makes it kind of clunky to get to it, um, that's kind of defeating the whole purpose. So really it's a holistic view on uh, what a, a chatbot does and how it fits into your whole communication platform, uh, which is your website, your 24 seven billboard. Uh, and lastly, how do we keep this website content relevant? Gain those insights, as I mentioned, uh, derived from those citizen interactions, whether it be questions or comments, uh, chatbot can handle it all. It'll serve up responses, it'll serve up answers. Uh, but more importantly, uh, with those insights uh, that you will receive uh, from a chatbot, especially one like ours, uh, is all of that feedback and all of that information. So take that and then apply that information and that, that knowledge, that intelligence gained uh, back into your web presentation. So it should be kind of an evolution of your whole communications uh, platform. So in, in kind of the, the green box note here, in continuing the momentum, um, you know, government agencies really need to improve the ability to listen. Uh, and that's uh, a quote plucked from... Um, uh, one of the uh, many online resources that are out there uh, that uh, really kind of get to uh, the heart of what uh, a chatbot is meant to do uh, in design. So now I want to show a couple of examples uh, that are out there now. Uh, I've got three examples for you. One of them uh, is one that we have delivered now, but um, we did a, a, a mock-up for a Boston 311. They've got a, a 311 system there. And um, we were uh, presenting the idea of using an interactive chatbot uh, to the city of Boston. Now, they have a, a 311 system in place uh, right now where the public can go to the web. Uh, they can uh, report issues. Uh, they can um, put detailed information, enter location, provide a description, all of those details. But the key thing is they have to go to a website, uh, whether on their phone or on their tablet or uh, at their desktop PC at home. And they've got to type in all that information. Um, a lot of times there's going to be some, some gaps or drop-offs in between the time where an issue is identified uh, and when that citizen uh, is then going to go and tell uh, the government office about it. A lot of people will still pick up the phone, but the idea is, you know, let's make it as automated as possible so that the citizen can get feedback. So this is the existing system uh, that Boston has in place today. So what we did is we mocked up an idea of this is what it could be like to increase that citizen engagement, the citizen interaction. And as you'll see as this plays along here, um, give the customer, in this case the citizen, a, a, a series of options, responses. So I'm just tapping in these things. What are, what are you looking for here? What, what's the high level uh, issue you're looking to accomplish? As you can see here, it's related to uh, an empty, emptying a waste bin uh, there in, in Boston. They have a bit of a trash issue. Uh, and there's questions that are asked and it's intuitive. It's just capturing the information that's necessary. But even a lot of that information can be automated, especially if you're using a mobile phone because you've got um, GPS on there, you've got other um, functions and tools like a camera uh, that you can not only uh, stamp where you're located, but take a picture of the issue. And all of that is recorded um, if you have a CRM in existence or uh, in the case that you don't, uh, certainly be able to at least uh, capture this in, in a general database until you have uh, something more robust to be able to uh, offer up uh, additional responses and information. But the key point here is increasing citizen engagement so that you can get uh, more involvement uh, from the citizens uh, to, again, capture that information, uh, not only make the community better, but hopefully make the website better too, uh, is if it's not easy to find this information by navigating through all the many options online, make it interactive, make it intuitive, and do the whole course there, uh, get the uh, information and data that's necessary. So that was just more of a, a mock-up idea, uh, kind of a demonstration there of, of what could be uh, in the case of a municipality or a state uh, that has a, a pretty robust uh, CRM system in place, but is looking to gain uh, additional um, uh, interaction from citizens uh, and also make it more intuitive. 
But uh, here's another real world study for uh, actually a chatbot as it was integrated with 311 uh, in the city of Los Angeles. And this is just uh, out there from the web. Uh, they, they built a chatbot uh, called the City Hall Internet Personality, AKA CHIP. Uh, and they actually saw a dramatic increase uh, of interaction from the public once it was released. Uh, and uh, Los Angeles, obviously a very large city um, and obviously uh, getting a lot of web traffic anyways. But uh, just the, the mere addition uh, of the option for a chatbot uh, dramatically increased the amount of engagement uh, that uh, folks were getting to the website. And I don't know how much advertising they did, but you know, certainly as the message gets out and it's easier to provide feedback you know, for the, the government office, uh, certainly it's a great uh, format to do that. Very simple interface, uh, type your message, you know, and uh, chip there, little robot, uh, he will uh, provide a, a response there for you. So they saw a lot of great uh, impact positively um, in that uh, implementation of the chatbots. So again, another great example, but that's also a, a 311 uh, type of setup, more municipality based. But uh, the other option I wanted, or the other example I wanted to show you here with our time today uh, is actually work that we've done. Um, so the state of Delaware has been a customer of Talon uh, for a few years now, and we do a number of, of different services for them, mostly related to the legislative side, uh, like their wor workflow and, and bill drafting solutions, and also the web presentation. Uh, but we approached them about implementing a chatbot uh, to assist them with better citizen engagement uh, for their website. Uh, and they just went live uh, with their chatbot uh, about a week and a half or two weeks ago. And now I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Give me a moment, I'm gonna transition over here. And so hopefully everybody can see that there now. I'm on the Delaware General Assembly homepage. Um, and in case you wanna follow along at home, uh, the address, address up on top there is uh, legis.delaware.gov. And this is their main homepage, landing page. And there's a lot of uh, really good ways to find information now up top in here. And they wanna lead with that because the most common inquiries and questions that they received were you know, status of a bill, who's my legislator, put the address in, uh, and listening to uh, assembly proceedings. But the new edition uh, is called an FAQ chatbot. So you see chatbot powered by Talon. I got, if you wanna try this out, this is out on the web uh, live now. Uh, and they're in the process of, of the initial phases of this rollout. Now see, it's called an FAQ chatbot, frequently asked questions, because it's based on their frequently asked questions page, which is a great first step uh, in the process of implementing a, a chatbot to your website. Uh, because it's an extension of the information you've already vetted, uh, both question-wise and response-wise as, as common issues, uh, but made it an interactive format. Uh, so it's a good baseline. And then from there, gaining insights uh, so that moving forward, uh, then you can have a better, uh, a better idea of where the questions are either falling short or where are the gaps uh, in the more detailed type of questions. So I'm going to run through a couple of examples just to see. See, it gives you the common greeting. Hello, how can I help you? But uh, some common questions that will come in, and these are some uh, part of their uh, frequently asked questions, are how does a bill become a law? And you'll see, I'm just typing that with uh, no question marks or anything like that, but it takes you to a flowchart uh, there. That link is missing. Um, and then that feedback is then captured on the back end uh, of the Q&A maker. But uh, some more advanced users might wanna know when does the Judiciary Committee meet? When they do that, you get some more detailed information. Uh, this one specifically has a link of here are all the schedules of where these committees meet, and it'll take you to that portion of the website. So if I click there, it's going to take me to the committee page, and I see all the different committees. You see that chatbot stuck with me uh, in this uh, session here uh, restarts, and then we kind of go on what's what's the next thing I can help you with here. I'm like, all right, so let's uh, let's try to make it a little bit more difficult it's on the house agenda today. And let's say the agenda is, uh, is a list published daily by each chamber of those bills and resolutions would have been scheduled. Click here to see the current agenda. And again, it's gonna bounce you over to that particular website, which that one's not found. <laughs> uh, but in that case, it can be updated. Uh, it can be detailed. Uh, it, can be, it can go right to a search. And with that in mind, more specifically for a legislature, somebody might want to know the status of a particular bill. So can I see HB 141? It's a particular um, house bill. It's got specifics to it. Now, an FAQ was not found that closely matched that question. Uh, now, for 
uh, administrative purposes, that just means that the confidence threshold uh, of the back end did not uh, reach the level that has been specified uh, by Delaware. It could have an answer queued up, but it's not confident enough based on the settings to provide a response that's specific. But it does take me to the search. So now it's taking me to the search of the website, and you'll see, lo and behold, here in a second, there's House Bill 141. And uh, for those of you following the uh, Medical Marijuana Act, uh, you can see the status of that right here. And of course, if I click into that, I'm gonna get into that bill detail. So it can still be helpful, even if it does not have a high confidence level in serving up a particular page, because it's not sure. Uh, and the more and more they get that particular question uh, in Delaware, they're gonna add that to the FAQ chatbot knowledge base, as I'll show you here in a minute, uh, so that the next time uh, that question gets asked, uh, then it will serve up this page more directly, so I don't need that additional uh, click. So that's the chatbot, and feel free to go out there and, and, and play around with that on the, uh, the Delaware website, uh, ask it questions, uh, test it out, uh, but all of those questions are based on this particular page here as a baseline. Uh, now, any new uh, bits of information that come in, uh, those are gonna be um, uh, adjusted and the eventual frequently asked questions page for them will be updated uh, as additional questions come in. If we get a lot of questions that are not shown up in here, they'll just add it. But of course, the long of this is to ultimately uh, take away frequently asked questions being a static page and really just rely on the chatbot um, and then go to the next phase after a frequently asked questions and make it more of an interactive um, um, agent, uh, if you will, to help out with uh, some of those issues. So now I'm gonna pivot over to uh, really what's the power of the back end of the chatbot solution um, as how uh, Talon has been delivering it here. And um, this is a test environment. Uh, this is not live data, but this is a copy of what was used when uh, Delaware went live. And you'll see, I'll just point out some of the basics here. Um, so on each particular question, uh, it's uh, given variants of the questions here, and this was set up uh, by the customer, uh, and then a default standard answer. So over the course of time, Oh, I should back up. Initially, um, the frequently asked questions is the basis for building uh, this knowledge base. Uh, and based up here, we can see that there's 150 pairs. Um, so for each uh, one of these uh, different responses, we're gonna lump them into one particular uh, default answer. And these are the ones that are specific. The fallback is what I showed before, which is that we don't have a specific answer. Let's go to the search. Uh, for the ones that uh, we do, anticipate questions for or variants of a question for, we've got those answers set up. As more insights come in, more information comes in, uh, we can add alternative phrasing, a different version of that question. Like, um, is this all the information on a bill? And this is very, um, it should be very familiar for anyone who's uh, ever looked at um, uh, the Alexa uh, code sets or Cortana or uh, Siri, uh, how it learns um, adaptive over time is, is having an arena to be able to add those uh, different types uh, and variants of questions. Uh, and then of course, being able to uh, provide a, a standard response. Uh, and this is more of a static version of it. Where you go from here uh, is allowing the machine itself or allowing the software itself uh, to become more adaptive and to come up with better responses and better insights on that data, uh, which is definitely another webinar. But uh, just to give you an idea of the exposure of this, uh, this is um, how it gets set up initially. And then from here, then it just captures that information uh, and then of course updates um, this uh, with customer direction. So I'm gonna pivot back to the, the presentation deck here now and talk about those data insights. So we've shown you the user perspective on how they interact with the chatbot, and we've shown you on the back end how it gets set up uh, and how you make edits uh, to those responses and also the anticipated questions. So now, what does the actual data look like? I blurred this out to protect the innocent, uh, but essentially this is uh, the data set that's uh, contained in, in those regular updates. It's also being captured uh, in, in a database that uh, can be queried. Uh, and you can bring up this information, but uh, just for administrators and those who want to uh, see the information, uh, this is a, a standard report uh, that gets sent out uh, on, again, a nightly basis, uh, if not uh, more routinely, uh, that's got uh, the date and time uh, of the question, the actual question that was posed to the chatbot, and then the actual answer uh, that was provided by the chatbot. And then the data columns over to the right are showing the level of confidence uh, that the chatbot uh, assigned to the response, uh, as well as a, a few other details here that I can't even read, uh, also the duration. 
but uh, more or less, uh, this is the, the data um, in the static form uh, that you can look at on a regular basis to see what's coming in. Uh, but more importantly, uh, over the course of time, as this data gets amassed, either manually or automatically, uh, the information can help update uh, that back end of the chatbot, the part with the artificial intelligence. So how do you get started with a chatbot? We've talked about great ideas, we've talked about concepts. Um, okay, where, where do we go from here? So we kind of see it in four different tranches here. Um, the first part is choosing a function. Uh, is it going to be an interactive customer service, uh, which is more in line of the example I showed uh, with Boston 311, where it's uh, got a set of baked answers and you're walking through a workflow uh, and there's an ultimate uh, conclusion to it? Or is it uh, more of an interactive frequently asked questions, which, which you saw with Delaware, uh, which I showed you. There's a, a group of questions uh, and anticip or anticipated questions and baked responses uh, that eventually grows over time. There are pluses and minuses to both, uh, both in terms of uh, complexity, uh, but also in terms of um, how you want to you know, gain those insights. Uh, but certainly both have their value, as you've seen. Uh, next, you wanna select a channel. Where is this gonna be? Is it gonna be on your website? Is it gonna be on your social media platforms? Think Facebook, uh, places like that, uh, or even through SMS. Um, you can do one or you can do all of them. Uh, each has their uh, individual uh, sets of processes, procedures, interactions, um, and expectations, uh, but it's important to know where are you trying to reach people and where are people, citizens, trying to reach you. Uh, next, set a baseline. Um, we saw there with the Delaware uh, Frequently Asked Questions page is they knew ahead of time before this went out uh, through the Frequently Asked Questions where the baseline was. Uh, and that's true of any of, of these websites, whether it's through analytics, um, word of mouth, history, uh, or just a really good guess, you're gonna have a good idea of what you expect um, to get uh, in terms of questions. And the great thing about chatbots is even if you have no idea uh, of all the questions that are gonna come in or the, the problems, or not even problems, but questions that will arise, uh, the chatbot's collecting that information and get, giving those insights as I've presented. Uh, and then over time, you can adjust your presentation uh, accordingly. And then lastly, uh, with cognitive services, it's choosing the right platform. Uh, the platform that I've showed you here uh, is uh, based off the Microsoft uh, bot framework. And with that framework, it comes fully loaded and baked with uh, all that functionality that I showed you on the back end and more. Uh, but there are uh, other platforms and other methodologies out there. Uh, we've chosen that one because that makes the most sense uh, for our customers. Uh, but certainly um, as you explore and as you look uh, at a different options, uh, it really comes down to what your priorities are. Uh, is uh, time to implementation and completion uh, the priority? Uh, is cost the priority? Uh, do you want to do it in-house? Do you want to outsource it? Um, the research out there uh, will probably give you and point you in different directions, uh, but uh, in our particular uh, portion of the world, uh, what we're showing here is, is what we've done and what we would do uh, based off of the, uh, the Microsoft framework. And with that, I'm done. That's me. Um, that is my contact information. And I am going to open it up and kick it back to Gina for any questions. Hey, Michael, great presentation. Um, so we did receive a handful of great questions. Um, I know we are running low on time, so please feel free to stick around um, if you guys want to hear the answers. So the first one is for Joe. Um, it is how is confidence, how is the confidence threshold defined? Hi, thank you, Gina. And uh, my name is Joe Geisner, and I'm the VP of Government Systems with Talon. So uh, that's a great question in terms of how confidence thresholds defined. So the the chatbot service in the back end uh, returns a confidence that says what is the confidence level that the service has that is answering the question correctly. It's so the front end uh, we set a threshold actually on the front end. So the front end receives the chatbot answer, and based on the threshold for confidence that we use, it'll either return the, the answer from the chatbot or return the stock answer that you saw that Michael brought up where it can either send you to search or the FAQs. Um, so um, right now, and, and the way that we implemented in Delaware is that it's configurable. So right now it's set to, I think, a 75% confidence level. Um, but uh, as we learn more information, we might adjust that accordingly. So, uh, so just, again, just to reiterate, the back end returns its confidence level and the front end has a threshold to determine uh, what, what level threshold it will accept the answers for. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. 
Um, so another question that we have received is, what is the typical implementation time frame for a Q&A chatbot like Delaware's? Yeah, great question. Um, so from what you saw there uh, in that functionality, um, having a, a very robust and baked uh, uh, backend as you saw there uh, with the Q&A maker, uh, those take actually only about two to four weeks. Um, now, of course, that can be variable uh, based on uh, client interactions and of course the, the back and forth. Uh, but uh, that is actually a pretty uh, low barrier to entry uh, to get started with chatbots. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Um, another one is, what technology is your chatbot built on? <laughs> they must have uh, put that one in before I mentioned it, but that, we are based off on the uh, uh, Microsoft uh, botnet uh, framework. So, I'm sorry, botnet, uh, Microsoft bot framework. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about that, uh, we can... Um, well, actually, we can either send that link through or uh, I believe you can Google uh, uh, Microsoft Bot Framework. Great, thank you. Um, last but not least, um, do you provide user experience in graphic design services for the chatbot and the website? Yes, absolutely yes. Um, and if you want to see some of our other work, uh, a good example of that would be the Massachusetts legislature, uh, speaking of legislatures. Um, we also have a few other ones, but uh, uh, the reason why I mentioned Massachusetts uh, legislature for the user experience uh, on the web uh, is that uh, recently won an award uh, from uh, the National Conference of State Legislatures um, uh, for innovative uh, technology. Uh, so yes, we definitely do the user experience and we highly recommend uh, making that a big part of your installation of a chatbot. Great, thank you. So it looks like we have answered all of the questions that we have received so far. Um, we will be sending out a follow-up after we end the webinar, um, and you can feel free to reach out to Michael or Joe with any questions. Um, we will also send the link to the webinar, so feel free to share it with your colleagues, um, and that is it. Thank you, Joe and Michael, um, and everyone have a great day. Thanks, Gina. Thank you.